welcome back to Penn. I'm Linda Aiken. And uh, when you graduated, uh, many of you in the class of 62 and 67, the healthcare workforce was much different than it is today or that it's going to be in the future. And the Leonard Davis Institute has distinguished itself in many ways in being a national authority uh, on healthcare policy. And in one way specifically that we're different from other uh, healthcare institutes around the country is that we have a primary area of research on the healthcare workforce. And we integrate that with health system redesign, with health economics, uh, with larger healthcare policy. And so I want to just make a few comments on the healthcare workforce. So nursing is the largest group of health professionals. We have about 3.5 million uh, nurses in the country. Penn, by the way, has the top nursing school in the world. This is official, not just my idea. So we're very proud of that. Um, and the we have about now three plus nurses for every doctor. Now, if anybody has had surgery recently, you probably noted uh, a very different change in the role of the surgeon in your care. It's very common now for the surgeon to meet with their patient, to make a decision upon surgery, and then often, even for complex surgery, you don't see the surgeon again because the roles are taken over pretty much the rest of the time by nurses who, by the way, have much more education than you know you were used to when you first graduated. So now most of the nurses in the country have a bachelor's degree and higher, and increasingly they have a master's degree or a doctorate. So the gap in education between nurses and the other allied health professionals like psychologists, uh, pharmacists, physical therapists, that gap in education between doctors and the other people in the healthcare workforce is closing. And so some of the other changes I'm sure you've seen is we have very few physicians in solo practice. Because of the nature of problems that we all have and we're bringing to physicians, really expand the scope so far that nobody in a single discipline like medicine really has the expertise or the time to handle everything that we patients are bringing them. Physicians recognize this and have added into their practice, nurse practitioners, many more nurses, um, other people, physician assistants, and so now when we go to see our physician, we're much more likely not even to see the physician. We're gonna see more and more of this, nurses, and physical therapists and pharmacists particularly, all working upstream, so they are taking over many of the roles that physicians in the past would have had, and physicians are focusing more on complex patients where their expertise is particularly important. So we see this evolving in some of the uh, opportunities for access. CVS, Walgreens, uh, Walmart, Many other retail centers have now, really just in the last decade, established clinics. And these clinics are primarily uh, nurse managed, nurse practitioner managed clinics where there is no doctor on site. Another uh, change that's happening, if you've been in a hospital recently, uh, we have fewer of our personal physicians that are following us into the hospital when we have a problem. So now 70% of all of our hospitals have hired full-time physicians, and we call them hospitalists, which is uh, good because we have more medical coverage in our hospitals, but it also opens up many other roles, for example, for nurses, because you no longer have the doctor that's been taking care of you for the past 30 years. So it's up to the nurses to piece together your history and uh, be in great contact with you while you're there and then translate that to your hospitalist. All told, this team model that we're moving to provides better quality. We have research to show that the quality of care is improving dramatically from involving more 
people from different disciplines that are more educated and more patient-oriented. Thank you.